Hi to all you off-road viewers, it's Rachel here and I've just reviewed the Marin Rift Zone 2. This is a bike that was updated for 2020 with revised geometry. So this Rift Zone now has 125 mils of rear travel and at first looks, it looks up to date and bang on trend in terms of short travel bikes. The aluminium rift zone we have here is the middle of the range. So there's three alloy bikes and this one retails at 18.45, that's pounds. But you can also buy the rift zone three for 2,395 pounds or the lower spec rift zone one for 1,445 pounds. So for just shy of 1,900 quid, the rift zone, the rift zone two that we have here gets a RockShox fork and a RockShox shock and those come in the form of a Recon RL 29er fork and a Deluxe Select R shock. To stop and go, there are Shimano MT201 hydraulic brakes with 180mm rotors front and rear. And then there's a SRAM SX Eagle drivetrain. So these brakes aren't very powerful and the rotors fitted can only be used with organic, so that's resin pads, which in this weather in the UK, wet and cold, you'll be swapping pads more times than you have hot dinners especially if you ride a lot. That might be an exaggeration, but it is something you're gonna to have to think about. You see a similar thing on other more budget bikes, um, and it was the same on a two grand giant trance that I recently reviewed as well. That SX Eagle drivetrain does give you all the range of the slightly pricier NX Eagle setup. And it's just one, this one comes with a little added weight and a lot less cost. So I really like the SX drivetrain. It's great for getting that big range on a budget, but the rear mech, the clutch, still allows the chain to slap over rough ground, and the shifting is a little clunky and heavy, but it's mostly reliable. The wheels that Marin have used here are their own brand rims, which are decently wide. They come 29 mil internal width, and they come with unbranded hubs. So Marin have also spec'd V-Tire Co tires, in this case, they're a 29 by 2.3 inch flow snap with a tacky compound, and that's on both front and rear. And lastly, for 1900 quid, you also get a dropper post. So on this medium bike, it's a 150 mil Transex dropper. Now, I'm 160 centimeters tall and rode, as I said, the medium bike. And this is as far as I can get the post inserted, which unfortunately is still a little too high for me to pedal when seated. Not all dropper posts have the same overall length though, so you might need, if you're shorter, to spec something with a shorter overall length compared to this post, and then allow you to get a little bit more insertion into the seat tube and take full advantage of that 150 mil drop. All those parts weigh in at a rather portly 34 pounds, which for any bike is heavy, and especially heavy for a short travel bike. After some discussion with Ollie from Marin, it appears that a lot of this weight will come from the drivetrain and from the wheels. With regards to SRAM SX, we've previously weighed an entire SX Eagle drivetrain in its component parts and found that the whole lot weighs in at 2.5 kilos, which is pretty hefty. Marin have also used wheels here with a solid rim and 32 spokes in both wheels. And so that's both factors that will add to the weight. Of course, in this case, it also makes for what we think will probably be a really heavy duty wheel set and one that we reckon you'll have a hard time trying to destroy. You can feel the weight of this bike when climbing. It's energy zapping despite the seat effect, steep effective seat tube angle of the bike. So this bike gets a 76 degree effective seat tube angle. And rather than zipping along with a good turn of speed on the flat, the Marin feels a bit sluggish um, and it's a bit hard work, which is pretty disappointing for a short travel bike. Um, and I expect that most people buying this bike, as well as wanting to get a bit rowdy on the trails, are gonna expect it to eat up the miles. Part of that sluggish behavior on the climbs and on the flat is also down to the tires. So these tires have a pretty aggressive tread pattern and that tacky compound on the front and the rear means that they offer quite a lot of rolling resistance. Descending though is another matter entirely. The rift zone rips up the trail and given the kit that this bike is working with, with regards to the lower end fork and shock, it's a great ride. 
So the shock set with the correct sag and the rebound fully open is still a little slow and I found it I needed to support the fork by clicking on three clicks of the compression damping from the dial on the top of the fork just to stop it blowing through its travel. After these adjustments are made though, the Rift Zone 2 becomes a capable trail bike. The geometry is progressive. This bike gets a decent roomy reach of 455 mils on a medium bike and a 65.5 degree head angle, both of which immediately inspire confidence on the descents. I've put this trail bike down my local and extremely muddy trails. I've ridden trail centre stuff on this bike and also local downhill tracks too. The latter is rather an exciting ride given the small amount of travel this bike, but for everything else, the Marin is game. The suspension system that Marin use is a linkage driven single pivot, and whilst it doesn't bob on the uphills, it is relatively supple on the rough when descending. It doesn't smooth out everything, but this is a short travel bike, remember, and a little bit more feedback is expected and only adds to the fun. You really feel connected to this bike when you ride. You ride in the bike rather than on top of it, and the short chainstays keep the rear end feeling snappy and quick to manoeuvre. A longer chainstay would help the bike feel more stable when descending, but the rift zone has erred on the side of a lively ride rather than a stupid stable one, and I really liked it. So, rivals, what matches a rift zone? So, rivals for the Marin Rift Zone come in at much higher prices. There's the Hope HB130, for example. It's got similar travel, but it's over 6K, where the most you can pay for a carbon Rift Zone is four grand. The white S120CR is a really nearly comparable bike in terms of progressive geometry. That one comes in at just over three grand for a slightly better spec and a carbon frame. The Rift Zone proves that it's ahead of the curve where geometry and pricing meet, and that's really exciting. This bike makes you want to upgrade components and then have another ride and just see how good it is. For under 2K though, and with ample opportunity to upgrade over time, the Rift Zone frame looks like one of the best out there at the moment. This spec might not be to everyone's tastes, but if you're just getting into mountain biking or you want a do-it-all short travel trail bike for a reasonable price, this full suspension speed steed will do you proud. As I said, it's not the lightest short travel mountain bike, but it is right for upgrades and you'll be able to shed some grams and make that really count. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to read the whole review, then head over to off.road.cc now and I will see you next time.